other interesting political news, you have Ron DeSantis GOP debate highlights. Now, Ron DeSantis has been pretty consistent overall in the polls. He's gone down throughout the past, you know, he didn't really come out strong, so to say. He had his presidential announcement when he everyone kind of knew what he was going to say. He went on Twitter and announced it with audio only, which, again, a majority of communication is through body language, through visual. So to have your presidential announcement on Twitter, where it's audio only, that's not a prudent idea, to say the least. And also would have been a good idea for Elon to actually showcase new technology in terms of Twitter's capabilities. They should just... Again, I don't know how much man hours or engineering hours it would take to make this happen, but that should have been a premier live stream where they'd be, like, it's the first live stream where we're showing people. Or right now, the Twitter live streams or X live streams, whatever you want to call them, they're all audio only. So a lost business opportunity, a lost political opportunity with his announcement, I would say. Now, in terms of his marketing, and again, I've looked, uh, let's see here. I'll check one more spot. In terms of marketing, he didn't, and again, I think this is a big lost opportunity. And it's been over, it's been about 48 hours. So, I mean, may, maybe they'll come out with it tomorrow or maybe it'll, maybe it'll be out here in a little bit. But again, how does he not have a nice compilation video? Because I was trying to find one. And first of all, you shouldn't have to try to find one. It should be right directly in front of you presenting itself i mean again so this is a little in terms of the coverage they did a couple like 50 second or one minute highlights but they didn't do a highlight reel where like vivek i think it was very prudent from a political um idea he just had hey here's my top five highlights which shows you what he's thinking about what these values what he thinks the american public is going to value so the ron kind of do a little bit of digging i basically had to sift through his twitter and try to find these are about one minute a piece, but these are the things that he thinks are important and these are the things that he's highlighting. So I think they're worth sharing today. Now, in this clip, he's had a little text before it. it says, quote, I will be the first president elected since 1988 who actually served overseas in a war. That's gonna help me as commander in chief because I understand that there are real lives at stake for people who wear the uniform. Without further ado, I will play a little clip. Dana asked last segment about 9-11, because I was just at the 9-11 memorial with the families, my wife and I are, but it's very touching to be there. And it affected my life because I ended up joining the military as a result of that. Um, I had been a blue collar kid, minimum wage in Dunedin, Florida. I ended up getting through Yale and Harvard Law School and somehow came out more conservative than when I went in. And that is not easy to do. Had a lot of opportunities to, to make money, but I wanted to serve. And I'll never forget coming back on the plane from Iraq uh, landing in Coronado, California, North Island, and feeling that breeze off the Pacific Ocean and say, you know what, I am lucky to have been born in America, and I think being able to serve, and I'll be the first president elected since 1988 who's actually served uh, overseas in a war, I think that's going to help me as commander-in-chief to know how you see these issues and understand that there are real lives at stake for people that wear the uniform. And we know that... I also just want to come back to something. I don't know why Twitter always does it where it just restarts the video automatically. Again, they're multi, well, I was going to say they're valued at multi trillions of dollars, or, but yeah, come on, fix the simple stuff. But nevertheless, when it comes to responses in terms of, he posted this on Twitter, you got 250,000 views in about a day. So that's pretty good for Ron. And he did sound a little bit more energetic in that clip. Now, in terms of responses on the Twitter sphere, or X, whatever you want to call it these days, Mr. Red Wave Press says, quote, Ron DeSantis can relate to our troops more than any other candidate can. He served in the military and knows what troops are going through. DeSantis will get the military back on track. He will get rid of the woke ideology plaguing the military today, unquote. Now, that person got 19 likes out of 1,382 views, which I believe is a contributing factor why you look at the military. They're missing the recruitment goals, not just one fiscal quarter, but consistently. And I think it's, it's even more pathetic when you think about the fact that they're lowering the bar again and again and again. So it used to be a premium thing. They're just lowering the bar from physical and mental standards. And you look at the recruiting videos, they're, they show people transitioning. They show, they emphasize how special you are as an individual. Which is the, I'm trying to think, the most mentally vacuous thing I've heard all week. And when you talk to, when I talk to any of my friends who served in the military, they tell me 
you are no longer an individual. You're part of a group. You don't emphasize someone's race or their religion or their their, their transition. They're not. It doesn't matter. You're one group together. You're all equal. You're all the same. You're part of a unit. But the commercial and the military now, they went from saying, be all you can be, to now saying, you're all special individual just the way you are. And by the way, we'll fund whatever you want. And we'll even have transition drugs on airships. Which again, if you want to join the military, you, you're not supposed to be on any prescription drugs. That you're not allowed to like this, which is another issue in the United States. You have so many people on antidepressants. They can't technically join the military, I believe. Cause I've been told that again, you can't be on, cause if you're, it makes sense. If you're in the middle of a battlefield, you don't want to be dependent on a substance like that, where maybe if you go a day without it, you, your functionability, your efficiencies drop. So let me know in the comments. Do you think that's a good point from Mr. Red Wave Press? Now scrolling through the other ones, you have Mr. Pesh Latin. This person says, you were an attorney, unquote. And they really put periods between each one of those words. And they got 109 likes. And then someone did respond to him, though this person didn't get a single like. This person named Tyler said, quote, he still served on tour in Iraq, unquote. Now in terms of other responses, let's see. Janine Kernan said, quote, DeSantis is the most qualified commander in chief. A willingness to serve is key, but he has also shown unflappable leadership in Florida, unquote. This person got 53 likes out of 2,000 views. Someone says, Mr. Ian Miles Chong says, quote, something Haley, Pence, and Scott still can't understand, unquote, getting 30 likes. Mr. Corn, oh, <laughs> that's hilarious. Someone actually got the URL or the Twitter name. Their official handle is Corn Pop Official, which is in reference to one of Biden's stories from when he was a kid. Corn Pop, Corn Pop is bad man. As he might say. Now, Mr. Corn Pop said, quote, or we could just reelect the guy who got us out and kept us out of multiple wars. Not going into war in the first place seems like a pretty good way to protect the troops, unquote. That person got 120 likes, which is a fascinating thing in terms of my, me being old enough to vote. And even as a kid, I played a little attention to politics. Trump was the only president I could think of that actually didn't increase the wars, which perhaps may... Many people will actually suspect that's one of the reasons why he was subsequently the whole state turns against him and the odds of him getting reelected were much lower, but it'll be interesting to see. So looks like eh, a couple of someone's so lazy they didn't even type out a word. They just have an emoji rolling their eyes. Someone's saying, no, you won't. Someone's saying, when do you plan on winning? Uh... Someone by the name of Rebecca Jones said, quote, fact check, Ron DeSantis did not fight in combat. He's been repeatedly called out for stolen valor, unquote. That person got 81 likes and the in terms of responses to that. So name Sim Lee said, quote, he was in the JAG Corp. He acted like he is in combat. He is a grifter, unquote. Which begs the, eh, which begs the question, did Ron, what's the internet tell us? Did Ron DeSantis serve in combat. His part. Let's see. Wall Street Journal says, DeSantis also served in Iraq in, and the Arabian Peninsula. He was part of this surge of 30,000 troops sent down to tamp down insurgencies that transformed cities such as Fallujah into violent war zones. Uh, let's see. Seen a couple, let me know in the comments. I'm seeing a couple con contradictory sources. I mean, everyone's, I mean, they're all saying he was in the military. I think the, they're trying to find one that said combat, de he was a US Global Leadership Collection, says he was a combat deployed Navy JAG officer. Uh, but I know a lot of people, that's another point of contention in terms of some people do a huge delineation between you're in the military, but you're in a, a supportive role or logistics or a different part and then active uh, in a combat role. So it'll be, it'll be interesting to see if people bring this point up more. Uh, we also have a couple more saying, someone just says Trump, Trump 2024. A lot of people talking about, uh, let's see here. 
Okay, someone by the name of Mackenzie has a picture of Ron with, he's in full tactical gear in front of a Humvee. And this person says, quote, you are a JAG advisor. Look at the picture and you wanted to run in the latest ad and Fox made you change it. One, have you ever seen a vehicle without marks or sand in Iraq? Two, right mirror isn't angled, so not driven. Okay, that's weird. The mirror is, yeah, the right the right mirror is actually the opposite way. So instead of the mirrors facing the driver, the, you know, one of them is actually the opposite way. Oddly enough. Um, this person says, three, Kevlar and boots look new. Four, no cover on helmet. Five, barrel of the rifle is taped. Six, wearing mechanics gloves. Uh, uh, then the people responding to that picture said, cosplay soldier. No one said, this is sad that you did this, Ron. I'm trying to zoom into the picture to see if maybe it's a training rifle. Interesting. If you're a military vet, let me know in the comments if you see this picture, if you can delineate or do a little bit more of a further analysis on it. That is kind of peculiar. But again, then again, my sample size, my knowledge is not that vast in terms of some of those technical proficiencies. But I would say about eh, 65, 70% of the comments for that particular video were supportive of Ron. Now, you have another one of Mr. DeSantis' highlights when he put on the good old Twitter and his... This one, uh, uh, geez Louise, Twitter, or X. Do you call it X or do you just call it Twitter still? It'd be fascinating to see what people actually do like in real life as opposed to internet and what Elon wants. But nevertheless, Ron actually tweeted this. He said, quote, let's talk about the future of the country, unquote. And then he played this video. Out. So, which one of you on stage tonight should be voted off the island? <laughs> to write your choice on the notepad in front of you. 15 <laughs> seconds, starting now. Of the people on the stage, who should be, I'm absolutely serious. With all due respect, wow. I mean, we're here, like, well, you know, we're happy to debate, but I think that that's disrespectful to my fellow competitors. Nobody yeah. wants to, so. nobody wants to participate. Let's do some questions. Let's talk about the future of the country. Not, not the best look for Chris Christie. He, he did use body language to communicate no, but when he went like that, his chins kind of went back and forth. But nevertheless, interesting that that's something that Ron wanted to highlight. And it is kind of, it also kind of showed you the lack of professionalism, I think, from the actual debate. There's a lot of critique when it comes to the people asking questions. Mr. Stuart Varney, Dana Perino, and Ela Calderon. And a lot of people are saying they let the conversations get away with them. It's... But yeah, this is apparently, Ron Sanchez really wants you to see the fact that he didn't want to do that, which I guess maybe shows class. Um, because again, by the polls, he's usually in second or third when you have Trump on top and it's usually DeSantis or Vivek. And in some polls, they actually have Nikki Haley. So it's one of those things where they just didn't want to make the guy from North Dakota feel bad. Which to his credit, we only know, that's the first time we brought up North Dakota on this podcast actually. And I believe many shows Probably the first time in months or years. But nevertheless, going to the comments. Again, it's got about right shy of 300K views. Got 295,500. Some by the name of Fad, F-A-D-D-E. This person said, quote, Trump won big time, unquote. Person got 20 likes out of 2,200 views. Uh, let's see here. What is that? Uh, no, no. Good old advertisements. Let's see. Someone from the name of Joseph Pino said, quote, I'm guessing that tomorrow's meltdown from Team DeSantis is going to be epic. LOL. Unquote. Person got 25 likes out of 1390 views. One more. We'll do one or two more popular ones. Mr. Babu Patel said, quote, Your delivery was great. Great. And that's what kind of leader you are. We need strong leaders who can deliver more and talk less. Unquote. Although, he didn't say the word twice, I just stuttered. Again, appreciate the critique. I'm trying to slowly get better at that. Slowly, but surely, I will speak slower, articulate more, and perhaps even stutter less. Tune in more to see. Also, we don't know. It's never been tried by the doctors. But, 
Perhaps clicking that subscribe button could fix my stutter. I don't think that's ever been tried in a clinical trial. So perhaps today that could fix the stutter. Will it? Time shall tell. I, I surely appreciate that click though. It very well might. Now other top responses would be, let's see. Uh, Mr. Bob Varsadelli said, quote, the future is you not winning the presidency, unquote, getting four, three likes. Some said, Hirsch said, quote, totally agree with DeSantis here, unquote, getting 53 likes. So it looks like probably, I would say this is one of his most positive responsive ratios in terms of the people responding to his post. They're overwhelmingly supportive of DeSantis here. I did find one, I found a negative, Mr. This person does get, they get an A minus for a good Twitter name. It is tongue in cheek and a pun all in one. I appreciate it to say the least. This person's name is Nunya Beeswax, which the only disappointing thing is that there's not a B, but it is a picture of Trump. Nevertheless, this person said, quote, what's wrong with DeSantis's mouth? He grinds his teeth. Seems like a method issue, unquote. That person got five likes. Which, granted, I don't know if that's a nervous thing or like a tick or... No, no, maybe just nervous in front of the camera. That is unusual, I think, though. Let's see. Let's do one more comment. So, a lot of people making fun of Fox News. Where's the DeSantis one? Oh, here's one. David Allen Campbell... He said, quote, I liked Ron's answer about Dana suggesting they vote someone off the island as being disrespectful. I agree, and it was beneath Dana. But I also liked Chris Christie's about voting Trump off because of his arrogant disrespect and sheer hubris. At first, he got seven likes. So overall, again, it was a little interesting. It was interesting that Ron chose that as a highlight to put on social media. But again, let me know in the comments, do you think that increase your perception of Ron or because I think his brand is already I think people if anything they kind of understand he's not bombastic as other candidates I don't know maybe but nevertheless we'll go to his three of four major highlights I saw on social media this he has a little text before the video he says quote Donald Trump is missing in action tonight he should be here explaining his comments about or saying that pro-life protections are somehow a quote terrible thing we're better off when everyone counts and we should stand for what we believe in. And then we have a fun little video getting 171,000 views. I want to ask you about something that I think is on a lot of Republicans' minds. This election could come down to less than 50,000 votes in three states. Abortion was on the ballot in six states in 2022. Republicans lost all of them. Next year, abortion will likely be on the ballot in Arizona. That is a must-win state. Governor DeSantis, how are you going to win over independent, pro-choice voters in Arizona? Same way we did in Florida. We won the greatest Republican victory in a governor's race in the history of the state, over 1.5 million votes. We were winning places like Miami-Dade County, Palm Beach, that nobody thought was possible uh, because we were leading with purpose and conviction. I reject this idea that pro-lifers are to blame for midterm defeats. I think there's other reasons for that. Uh, the former president, um, you know, he's missing in action tonight. He's had a lot to say about that. He should be here explaining his comments to try to say that pro-life protections are somehow a terrible thing. I want him to look into the eyes and tell people who've been fighting this fight for a long time. I was at, my wife and I uh, earlier today were at the gravesite of President Mrs. Reagan, and I noticed that um, there was a quote where it says, Every single person has purpose and worth. We're better off when everybody counts. And I think we should stand for what we believe in. I think we should hold the Democrats accountable for their extremism, supporting abortion all the way up until the moment of birth. That is infanticide and that is wrong. Now, interestingly enough, he's, I think more, more Republicans are starting to bring this up for as long as I've been, following politics, it's kind of been the cliche to blame that topic for why they keep losing. 
I think part of the reason is because also they run such inept, moronic candidates throughout the years. I mean, you look at Pennsylvania when they were running Dr. Oz as a candidate, where Dr. Oz didn't even live, he didn't even live there. And you look at his whole show and what he's believed in, it's mostly been leftist ideals. So Republicans are great at picking terrible candidates to run, I believe. I think that's a big issue. Another issue is that they don't, so many times, oftentimes they don't stand for anything. In terms of, if you just take a, take a stand on a topic, I'll understand it. I'll, if you tell me your stance, I'd be interested in how you got to that conclusion. But they just keep moving the bar. I mean, one of the things being gun rights. They're supposed to be pro-Second Amendment. The NFA still exists. That's been around since 1934, I believe. The National Firearms Act. They're supposed to be pushing back. But they just acquiesce so much. So I think part of the reason they keep losing is they acquiesce and just keep moving and giving up. Giving them an inch and thereby giving them a mile to competition. Now, when it comes to this topic, I think in the United States there's a lot more common ground than people care to admit around the topic of abortion. I think a lot of people, in terms of logic and, you know, where they feel comfortable, again, I think most people would say nine months. Where's the argument? Again, there's always the nuance on it could be life-threatening to the mother. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. But I'm saying in terms of, what if there's a caveat where you did allow that? A lot of people use that as a red herring argument. So I think, and again, I think a lot of these presidents, a lot of these candidates are going for the, the yes or no. They're going, trying to make it an ultimatum where I think, I think there's a good argument to say on a federal, uh, it's already been that decision for that topic. It's already been relegated back to the states, which is what Republicans said it is. It's a state's issue. It's not the constitution. Therefore, it's a state's issue. It's a state's topic. So why they're even talking about it it's going to make, I think it's going to make it look, look, look even more hypocritical. Let me know in the comments. Do you think, again, they got, it's back to the states. It's a states' rights issue. But now they're talking about abortion again. Does that, is that, let me know. Do you think that's an appropriate topic for federal law now that, again, many of them are arguing as a states' rights issue? So let me know in the comments about that. Now looking to the comments of the feedback from his post, you have somebody named Christine Hawkins tagging at Don, real Donald Trump saying, quote, will you stand for life? She got 13 likes. Someone named Dan Blasey saying, quote, Trump won the debate and he got 42 likes. Let's see. Matt NFT said, quote, Trump would have been entertaining, unquote. Got nine likes. WP, their handle is actually Will, Ta will Panic. Pretty good. Again, that stutter. It, again, it might cure tomorrow if you click that subscribe button. It's I haven't seen any clinical trials from the Mayo Clinic when, in regard to that, but it can't hurt to try. Nevertheless, this person named Will Panic said, quote, he is a coward, unquote. Person got 11 likes. Now, again, I don't know if he's talking about Trump or DeSantis here because they didn't delineate it. DeSantis posted it, but it, he also talked about Trump. Again, there's, there's uh, not much clarification in that post. Some more popular responses from Shane Williams said, quote, Ron, you don't win by attacking Donald. You need his voting base to win. When he's polling so far ahead of the rest of you, you know why he's not on the stage. Instead of going after Trump, take a position like Vivek Ramaswamy and focus on moving forward, unquote. Person got 73 likes out of 1,630 views. That being one of the most popular responses to Ron DeSantis' tweet or X post, whatever you want to call it. And I think that's a good point. There are a lot of people where there's a lot of Trump fans. There's a very, there's a large group of people in the Republican Party, I think it was also in the Independent Party, where they are diehard Trumpers. They want to vote for him. And if, because of legal circumstances, Trump is barred from running, then they will vote for one of these people, or in some cases, they'll abdicate from voting altogether. Now, in those cases, if one of these candidates is making a whole career out of talking pejoratively about Trump, a lot of people, again, politics has become a thing where people identify with the politicians. It's a whole part of their personality, which I think is silly in and of itself. But nevertheless, it's become a phenomenon in the United States, especially. They're going to feel like they're being personally attacked. Again, I don't, it's not, I don't believe that's logical, but again, facts don't care about your feelings. A wise man once said. 
So I think this person does have a point by going after Trump so hard, you are alienated some of those people. And by doing so, they might not vote for you. Vivek seems to be the major candidate who's being very friendly with Trump in terms of his critique of Trump's policies and his interactions. He's getting a lot of the people who would vote for Trump, but if Trump is barred from the competition of becoming president, they'll probably go for Vivek. Because Vivek is not bad-talking Trump when a majority of these candidates are. Again, don't get me wrong, it's a, it's a strategy on the political chessboard. Again, I just don't know how many numbers are there to make it a positive strategy. Nevertheless, we'll go back to the comments for a couple more. Mr. S or Truth said, quote, he still won the debate, unquote, getting 24 likes. Someone by the name of Tracy Ann said, quote, Trump won, getting, she got, unquote, she got 24 likes as well. Let's see here. Oh, someone named Sweet Dream said, quote, he's not missing. I saw him speak in Michigan tonight. Was there something else going on tonight that we should know about? Unquote. A little tongue in cheek. I like that. Trump was speaking at the same time as debate. And it looks like she got 46 likes out of 585 views. So interesting enough, I, we talked about the previous post in regard to DeSantis talking about his career being a veteran. Overwhelming majority of the comments were in support of him. This one, it seems to be more of the standard or average interaction from a social media perspective, at least on the Twitter X platform. This one is much, much more critiquing of DeSantis, I'd say, shoot, I'd say 40% are in support. Again, 40% of the comments being positive about DeSantis. Another popular one is just a, a Tracy Ann saying again, quote, real Donald Trump is trying to save the auto industry while speaking in Michigan. The oil and gas industry endorsed Trump, takes several, takes several seats. Again, that stutter. We've never tried, but click that subscribe button. Maybe it will help. A crazy idea, but I've heard crazier. And that's just, she actually had a picture of Trump's, and the text is drill, baby, drill. American oil from American soil. That got 90 likes. So interestingly enough, I'd say that's kind of more the status quo interaction. Now, the last highlight from Mr. Ron DeSantis. Let's go and pull this up right here. And again, let me know. Do you call it Twitter or is it X now? What do you, what do you call it in real life? But nevertheless, Ron DeSantis says, quote, I'm the only one who's gotten in from big fights and has delivered big victories. I've done it while there's talk. And this got 286,000 views in 48 hours. Here's the thing that I, Ron, I just find interesting. Ron, Ron, let me finish All the first. these guys have said Here's the fact. And I appreciate a lot of the things they're saying. Nikki I'm Haley. the only one up here who's gotten in the big fights and has delivered big victories for the people of Florida. And that's what it's all about. You can always talk, but when, when it gets hot in there, when they're shooting arrows at you, are you going to be stand up for parents' rights, keep the state free? Are you going to be able to do all those things? And in the state of Florida, because of our success, the Democratic Party lies in ruins. We have won the big fights. We have turned our state into a Republican state. People respond to leadership. I've done it while others have talked about, about it. How about the which, again, from a marketing political perspective, you know, looking at pieces on the political chessboard, as I like to say, he needs to keep moving those pieces that emphasize his success as a governor. Now, there's a little bit of a nuance to that. He also had a big advantage of many people moved to Florida because they're fleeing draconian dictatorial states. People are fleeing California and New York ad nauseum because they are tired of getting their tax, their paychecks taxed to death tired of being locked down, being regulated so much you can hardly take a step. Now, those people, um, more often than not, would be Republicans moving away from those areas. And Florida is one of the biggest hotspots where they moved to. So uh, you could argue, of course, that he helped the policies and he put the things in place that would attract them as well. I think part of it is also the no income tax in Florida. That's also a big attraction as well. Now, let me see. Let's What, what do the comments say when it comes to this post from Ron? So you got about... You know, again, 286,000 views. Let's see. Someone by the name of Sean Phillips. But it's spelled S-H-O-N. And that's just ridiculous. It's crazy it's being called topping. Oh, wait. But nevertheless, Mr. Sean says, quote, I made a donation to at Ron DeSantis tonight, and I never made, gave a single dime to any politician, unquote. This person got 243 likes. 
and 3,196 views, which is perhaps one of the most positive responses I've seen in the de- when it comes to DeSantis' social media interaction and looking at the comments from his post. Now, uh, someone did respond specifically to that comment. Someone named Kate said, quote, Waste of money, his big donors will continue to drop him, especially after tonight, unquote. Though Kate did only get nine likes in comparison to the original 243 for Mr. Sean with an S-H-O-N. Other popular responses include Mary Taylor saying, quote, we need some of this in Texas, unquote. And she got 71 likes out of 3,514 views. Now, someone said Miguel Fornia. Apparently, he perhaps bought the state of California, which wouldn't be too hard considering they're usually in debt. So what's the real value of it? I'm only partially kidding. Now, this person says... Ron DeSantis is really creepy. And I don't know if there's audio, but it looks like just a video of Ron shaking his head back and forth. Okay, just pejorative cliche music, and it's Ron just shaking his head. Which, again, he doesn't look... He's just smiling and waving it back and forth. I mean, with he just looks like a politician in the picture, so... But nevertheless, it looks like 116 people liked that, so it resonated with some folks. So named Chris Loach said, quote, this is a very great moment for you, unquote, getting 52 likes. So this one, someone from the JL podcast said, LOL, you lost the debate. They got 33 likes. Let's see here. A lot of gifts, a lot of memes. Someone named Donna Marie just photoshopped poorly. Like, High heels, so DeSantis looks, it looks like high heels. DeSantis is wearing high heels according to her meme, but she did get 13 likes. I think those. Christian Rogers said, quote, in the state of Florida, the Democratic Party lies in ruins, unquote. And this person has an exhaust emoji, like someone's exhausted or tired, and a fire emoji, getting 20 likes. Let's see here. Uh, Mr. Tech Nix. And I will, for the sake of entertainment, make the sacrifice and attempt the clearly... This person definitely wanted the enunciation of Trump. So, I will try. Quote, DeSanctimonious is flying fast like an injured bird in the sky. Unquote. Was it the worst you heard or the best? Let me know in the comments. Time shall tell. Now, this person did get 15 likes out of 303 views. So, again, I... Let's see. Someone named Frosted Sleet said, quote, Well, Trump won and he wasn't even there, unquote. And he said... The person got 26 likes. So, eh, I'd say kind of, again, the cli- Not the cliche, but... Eh, it's kind of the more standard interaction when it comes to DeSantis' social media. It looks like a little bit over half are negative or pejorative or critiquing him. And again, time shall tell to see what's the correlation between social media and getting votes. It'll be interesting to see. Let me know in the comments, do you think, what are your thoughts on his overall little highlight compilations? I I think he certainly should have done it in one video like many other candidates did. Makes it a little bit more convenient. Maybe some people are debating saying, well, these are nice, you know, one to two minute chunks, videos easy to digest. Well, why not? Oh, I would argue, why not just do both? Make it get the best of both worlds, perhaps? But that's just my three cents. It used to be two cents, but 40 year hyperinflation, God charge three cents. Although it is still free to click that subscribe button. Thank you again for taking the time to tune in today. Again, I know it's ambitious, but we're trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of October. So if you can click that button, I'd greatly appreciate it. Also, don't forget to take the time to like and comment. Your feedback is greatly appreciated. Even if it's critical feedback, that's how we get the channel better and better. It's how I improve. Also, don't forget to take the time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers. Heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe. Fight the good fight.